Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. And welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog, uploading a new video every evening at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Now I have something quite special for you this evening because I delved into my to edit folder and found an unedited video. The week I spent with a simply awesome Audi SQ8. Now I must emphasize this film was shot in January, well before any of the current restrictions were in place, but I thought you'd enjoy my week. It was a simply epic car and a really interesting time spent. I did a thousand miles and got to know the car really well. Now, behind me is my long-term JCW Clubman and my short-term, well, for the next week anyway, Audi SQ8 from Audi UK. And I'm gonna be driving that car this week. I have a super busy week and I thought I would do one of my Living With videos. I'm gonna put this car through its paces and I thought you would like to come along for the journey. And first off, I have to drive to the Cotswolds to some friends. Now, I'm going with Mrs. Petrolped, but tomorrow morning, I have to drive into London for some work. So we can't go in the same car. So we're actually gonna go in convoy in these two cars. So I'm just getting everything loaded up. The pups are coming two so the next time I see you I will be in the car and we can have a chat about my plans for the week. All right then, come on you. Now sit down there and get your racing harness on. Good girl, excellent. Right then, what a military operation this is. Put that my wireless charging pad there so hopefully that's going to wireless charge. All right I think we're all set. Testing, testing, comms check. Beep. Right, so. I'm not talking to you on a radio. <laughs> it's good, it, it'll help us communicate, especially when you speed off. So, format of this week then, um, I, I quite like doing these, just taking along uh, you along with me for the for the week. Uh, so it's Saturday morning currently. We are now on our way to the Cotswolds to stay with some friends this evening. But as I said, I then need to be in London for 11 o'clock tomorrow for work. Um, and there's no there's no way that kind of Mrs. Petrolped's gonna come and uh, join me on that one. So we decided we go in two cars. She can then stay with our friends tomorrow and drive home when she's done. And we'll meet at home tomorrow night. And then Monday morning, uh, once I've done a few things around home, that I then need to start driving around. I've got lots and lots of driving to do this week. And I can see that Mrs. Petroped is already doing some overtaking up there. <laughs> now, this car, 900 Newton meters of torque, that is twice the torque of the JCW Clubman, which is frankly ridiculous. But it is a proper, proper quick car, this. Because you can overtake effortless ease. So I'm gonna get my head down, crack on. What I haven't mentioned as well is I've set the long-term trip, I've reset all the counters back to zero so I can find out one how many miles I do this week but also I'm gonna do different fuel economy runs at different times throughout the week. At the moment I'm in dynamic mode obviously um, and I'm just gonna drive without thinking about being fuel efficient and see in the 230 odd miles that I've got, or sorry, 120 miles that I've got, what my fuel economy is going to be like. And then what I might do is step into um, a more economic mode of driving a bit later on in the week. But right now, the main job is keeping up with the JCW in front because Mrs. Petrolhead has a heavy right foot. It's really hard to concentrate when you've got those big doughy eyes looking up at you. You all right there? What do you think of the SQ8 then? Oh, hey. Comfy. <laughs> we are not that far away from our friend's house now. I'm looking forward to catching up with old friends and probably opening a bottle or two of champagne, I reckon. Right, we have arrived. So I shall see you tomorrow. We're gonna have a nice evening. <laughs> Good morning, people. It's bright and early and it's very, very cold. And I'm off into central London uh, for a little job I need to do. Well, <clears throat> I have just topped up the tanks um, and interestingly, 
the range in this beast is 555 miles to a full tank, which is quite impressive actually. Um, now, <laughs> I was probably only, I don't know, I still had way more, over half a tank of fuel and I put 40 quid in, so it's clearly gonna be a very, very expensive refill if you fill it from empty. Um, but yeah, and it is such a beautiful morning in the Cotswolds today, oh my goodness me. It's a bit foggy and misty, so you have to be a bit careful. It's still super cold. Bit of frost on the road surface, but that sunshine is warming the landscape. And, oh, look at it. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. But we've got 85 miles to get to central London. And apparently, according to Waze, that's going to take me one hour and 40 minutes. I've been having a bit of a play with this car's autonomous driving adaptive cruise control. So I've currently got it set and it basically has speed sign recognition. So it, it sets itself to the national speed limit. I'm on a 60 mile an hour single carriageway national speed limit road. Um, it is a hands-on feature, but effectively the car is currently steering itself um, quite happily. It's very smooth <laughs> the way it does it. So the car has spotted that there's a roundabout coming up. There's a little indicator on the dash, which I'm sure I probably won't be able to get on camera. I'm not currently going to do anything with the brake. It's slowing me down. I'm now coming down to 45. I've not touched the, touched the pedals yet at all. I'm going straight over here. So yeah, I'm going straight over and it's basically taking me round the roundabout. I'm gonna indicate off here. I haven't touched the pedals. <laughs> and I'm now gonna accelerate away. Again, it's a 60 limit, national speed limit road. I'm gonna accelerate away up to the national speed limit. I haven't touched the pedals. <laughs> uh, and it takes me up to 60. Now, I, I wouldn't drive like that normally, but, and I know many of you will be like, that's just way too much the car, but it's, it's very clever. If you don't want to speed, this is the car for you because you stick it in that mode and it just makes sure you never go over the speed limit, which in this car is actually quite a good feature because it is so fast, it's unbelievable. So we're now coming into the outskirts of London. We've got about know, 10 miles to go. But for me, this is where this speed uh, or speed sign recognition adaptive cruise control thing comes into its own. It makes city driving so much more relaxing because I know this car will not go over the speed limit. And as you come into London, or any major city for that matter, there are so many changes in speed limit. There's the average speed cameras, static speed cameras. So, you know, if you kind of want to just make sure you're not gonna have one of those little slips where you go a few miles an hour over, this is just brilliant. Yeah, really, really good. Now then, one thing to mention, um, I uh, reset my trip when I left this morning so we've done 83 miles and for the first time in this car i've crept into the mpg that starts with a three i'm doing i've done so far 30.3 miles per gallon i'm still in dynamic mode i haven't been driving that aggressively or or um pushing on that much but um, so that's crept up into the 30s now on the way home when i drive this afternoon back from central london back home i'm going to put it in eco mode and just see what difference that makes but the MPG starting with a three makes me feel far, far better. Uh, my long-term trip is 27.7, that's over 240 miles. So that's probably more indicative of average driving, but you can get it to start with a three. Well, what a busy day I've had in London today. It's been a beautiful day, but really very, very cold. So I'm now on my way back home uh, it's not that far, it's 65 miles um, uh, home. Um, and what I've done is I've put the car into efficiency mode just to see what impact that has on uh, the MPG. I, I, I'm guessing I might be able to kind of squeeze out early 30s. I hate London. 45 minutes I've been in the car and I've done five miles. <laughs> uh, and that isn't good for fuel economy, people. 15 miles per gallon is what I <laughs> I'm averaging, I'm averaging seven miles an hour. I'm not even sure if this will come out because it's now gone dark. <laughs> uh, I pulled over, got some tea for this evening when I get home to Mrs. Petroped and the pups, but it's just such a beautiful evening. There's a stunning sunset. So I'm gonna make my way home. I won't bother filming when I get home. Um, 
I am now out of London and making a be better progress and my fuel economy is improving, it's now just sneaked above 28 mpg, but I'll report back tomorrow what I ended up getting. I reckon I can get into the 30s though. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Probably need to explain why I'm dressed up so smartly and also explain that my my plans for the week changed slightly. So I left you, uh, when did I leave you? On Sunday and uh, the plan was for me on Monday to drive up to Wales and start my week of work. Those plans, sorry, to drive actually I was going to go to Luton and then on to Wales. Those plans changed because a few things didn't happen because of people being unwell and so on. So unexpectedly I actually had Monday and Tuesday at home which was very good news because yesterday I spent the day filming the collaboration review of this car and I got everything done. Now unfortunately that the downside of that is I had kind of hoped to do some of that actually in Wales uh, later on in the week but because of the way things in fact this morning because of things worked out that didn't happen it's now Wednesday morning and I'm in the car heading up to Warrington. I have a very important meeting as you can tell which is why I'm in my uh, best whistle and flute um, and then from Warrington I then need to drive to Coventry where I'm going to overnight because I'm working in Coventry tomorrow morning. So my um, uh, my ways says I have 248 miles uh, that's going to take me about four hours 21, so plenty of time um, to enjoy the car. Um, and I've got 295 miles of range left in the tank, so I'll probably, uh, well, we'll see. I'll probably just get there on one tank and fill up once I'm there. Now, in my collaboration review, um, a few questions were asked about the economy, and I did say that I would do that in this video so we are doing lots of economy stuff and one of the questions was would I brim the tank and then do a an economy run based on my manual calculations of litres of fuel going in versus miles driven so my plan is to do that once I fill up the tank when that this current tank is um, emptied and depleted I'll brim it and then I'll do a proper MPG run but for now I'm just going to get my bum nice and warm get the car heated up and sit back and enjoy a fairly long drive. One thing I did forget and I did promise you when I was driving back on Sunday and it started to get dark I didn't kind of tell you how I got on fuel economy wise. I managed just under 31 mpg on the way back um, which I didn't think was too bad and interestingly that ducked down quite a bit because my last sort of 20 to 25 miles on my journey home are on this road. It's a B road um, so you've got you know a, a bit more accelerating out of corners and those types of things so your fuel does drop down a little bit so I have been in the car for four hours and 15 minutes done 236 miles and I am a mile away from my destination um, so yeah this is Warrington I've only been here a few times a lot of my family live up this way um, uh, my uh, MPG actually is uh, 32.8 with an average speed of 55 miles an hour so I think I've done <clears throat> pretty well actually. Now then many of you wanted to know what this beast is like in a tight enclosed space like a car park. Uh, it's very very tight. I am hugely worried about curbing these wheels. <laughs> right let's find a parking space. I don't think there are many in this uh, car park as it happens in that one all right here we go this is a this is a challenge straight away can i get this car in the biggest in the smallest car park space you've ever seen in your life beep 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 beep, beep. living with <laughs> there we go <laughs> stop beeping at me <laughs> right that's a tight car parking space. I just thought you would like to see how tight this car park space is. So I've left quite a bit of space on this side, but then <laughs> I am literally on the line just there. Look at that, got a fag paper in there. <laughs> very, very tight. And then round the back. Yeah, so 
This car's a big car. Well, a successful meeting. Now, before I head to Coventry, I'm gonna pull into this Sainsbury's and get some fuel. This thing has a big tank. So it might not be the most frugal of cars, 31, something like that miles per gallon is something you would expect. However, it does have a very large tank and excellent range, which does make me worry a little bit about how much it's gonna to cost to fill up with this garage. What's the diesel? Oh, actually, 128.9 isn't too expensive for diesel. I'm gonna come and live in the north. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Tank brimmed. So just shy of 70 litres and 40 pence short of 90 pounds to fill this bad boy. And I've now got a range of 500 and 80 miles, which is plenty to get me to my destination. And just to add to that, for my uh, brimming the tank thing, the mileage of the car is at 4,663 miles, and I have brimmed the tank. So the next time I fill up, I'll basically then do a manual calculation to work out my fuel economy. Okay, my last input into the journal for today, because it's getting dark, I have, uh, yeah, fog, thank you, Waze, uh, 39 miles and 48 minutes to go to my hotel, uh, but I have just reached 38 miles per gallon, helped a lot by um, uh, a variable speed limit through the roadworks on the M6, so I was doing 50 for a long time, and that meant my uh, MPG eked up. I reckon that's about as good as you're gonna get from this car, indicated on the trip computer anyway. Yeah, 38 MPG, yeah, quite happy with that. Tick. Well, another long but successful day's work completed. <laughs> and it's, well, it's very nearly dark, it's four o'clock. I've been on the go, I think we left the hotel this morning at about quarter past seven. So a very full day and I now have uh, 106 miles to go. I'm driving to Wales, so it's about two hours 20 according to my sat nav. So <laughs> never let it be said that when I have a press car, I don't properly put it through its paces. Now I'm pretty sure by the time I get to, well, not pretty sure, I'm gonna get to my destination about half past six. It's gonna be dark. Um, so I won't be able to do too much of an update, but no doubt I will speak to you before we get there, and if not, I'll talk to you in the morning. So I am finally on my way home after another busy day in Wales. And this road is the perfect excuse to talk about something I haven't mentioned yet in this video. And that is the four wheel steering system that's in this Vorsprung SQ8. And I guess for me, the, the interesting thing is the Vorsprung package is a significantly pricey thing to add on to your spec. And the question is, for most average drivers, just how much difference would it make? Would they really notice? Now, I've, I've driven quite a few four-wheel steer cars now, and, and it does make them very nimble. And what the four-wheel steering system in this particular car does is it, it kind of changes depending on how fast you're going. So at slow speeds, what you're basically doing is getting the wheels turn into each other to get you to go around the corners more quickly. And then at higher speeds, they work together and that, that just allows you to move from lane to lane, for example, on the motorway. The other thing in the Vorsprung model is that the, um, the air suspension, and then it's got this quite trick anti-roll system. What that means is when you're going around corners, the car basically does have, has no body roll at all. It's very flat. It's almost freakishly flat, actually. So again, if you think back of you know big SUVs of old, you would wallow around a corner like this, whereas its cornering characteristic feel far more like a kind of hot hatch sports saloon than a big SUV. So you really can enjoy yourself down a twisty road like this. The air suspension soaks up the bumps. You know, I love Welsh roads to bits, but yeah, the road surface in places really is not very good. There's potholes and bumps and the car just just eats them up. It's really good. So yeah, when you 
you come off the motorway and I've done so many motorway miles in this car and it's impressed me hugely and, and it's very very good at motorway miles but when you come off of the motorway or the dual carriageway and you hit a lovely bit of road like this you really can push on and and drive the car quite hard but the question is would I spec the Vorsprung option if I'm really honest if it was my money I probably wouldn't um, on the day-to-day -day basis I'm not driven this car without it so I can't fully comment but I don't think on a on a I don't think you'd notice it that much um, the average driver and you know it takes the purchase price of this car down from six figures down to five you know 86 grand and upwards so by the time you chuck a bit of spec at it maybe 70 grand and 70 grand for me for this car that feels about right 100k that, that's that's big money I mean for me if I was to buy a car from the Audi stable and be spending 100 grand it would be an RS6 but yes I've got uh, about well the total journey homes about 220 miles so I have been going for a little while so we've got 192 miles left four hours estimated drive time um, but I've still got plenty of fuel I've still got 330 miles of uh, range left in the tank so it looks highly likely that I'm going to be able to have gone from Coventry to Wales all the way back to Chichester on the same tank of fuel. Well, I've driven all the way through Wales and I'm now on the M5 and I thought I'd best quickly sign off for today because it's getting dark. Um, and what I'm going to do is draw this video to a close tomorrow. What we do need to do is go to the petrol station brim the tank again and calculate the MPG manually and then just give you my final impressions from a week with this car I mean so far I've done just over 900 miles by the time I get home it'll be best part of 950 miles uh, sorry of 1050 miles beg your pardon so yeah I've, I've certainly done the hours 23 hours 40 minutes I've been sat in this seat this week so I know the car pretty well now then welcome to the last day of what seems like a very long vlog <laughs> um, the car is actually going back tomorrow so what I need to do is basically top her up with fuel brim the tanks and do the final calculations of the MPG test so let's jump inside and we'll head off to the petrol station and brim the tanks now it's currently on a, it's still got a quarter of a tank of fuel left in it so i think it's still going to be quite a lot of money to fill it up because the tank on this thing is cavernous wish me luck going in <laughs> there you go 69.38 litres that cost me 89 pounds and 43 pence oh my god good job i'm going to expense that uh okay now i reckon we just quickly drive around the corner and do some maths because i don't want to hold up the pump because that absolutely drives my head in that does my head in when people do that i've now done 5141 and i had done 4757 so we have done a total of 384 miles let's try and put the liters into into gallon shall we uh, so liters I did 69.38 liters let's do liters into gallons so 59 oh, sorry 15.26 gallons so 384 miles divided by 15 point two six equals 25.16 there you go so the brim uh, MPG is 25.16 over that 300 and, um, 384 miles. Quite interesting that because the fuel economy gauge in the car most of the time has been sat at either early 30s or oh, it's not gone below 30 that much to be honest very interesting there you go brim tank mpg test very interesting just over 25 miles to the gallon 
<laughs> so there you go. Typical me. I actually forgot while I had the car to do a close to the video, but never mind. I hope you enjoyed that one. I know it was a little bit long, but I had so much footage. I actually, I didn't put loads of stuff in that film, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But you take care. Stay safe.